Lebanon, a nation familiar with conflict, finds itself once again teetering on the precipice. Exploding pages and walkie-talkies, once tools of communication, have become instruments of death, targeting members of Hezbollah. The blasts, swift and brutal, have ripped through the illusion of normalcy, leaving behind a trail of carnage and fear. These are not mere acts of violence, they are calculated assaults on a nation already grappling with political and economic turmoil. The attackers, shrouded in secrecy, operate with chilling precision, their motives as murky as the smoke-filled air over Beirut. The streets, once vibrant with life, are now heavy with suspicion. Every ring of a phone, every crackle of a walkie-talkie sends shivers down the spines of ordinary citizens. The human cost of this new wave of terror is staggering. Hospitals, already stretched thin by years of crisis, are now overwhelmed with the wounded and the dying. Doctors and nurses, working tirelessly amidst the chaos, are forced to make impossible choices, prioritizing the most critical cases. Families, their faces etched with grief and anxiety, huddle in waiting rooms, desperate for news of loved ones. The attacks have exposed the fragility of Lebanon's healthcare system, already buckling under the weight of economic collapse and political instability. Medicines and essential supplies are running dangerously low, and there is a desperate shortage of qualified medical personnel. While no group has officially claimed responsibility for the attacks, the finger of blame points squarely at Israel. The Jewish state, locked in a decades-long conflict with Hezbollah, has made no secret of its desire to neutralize the group's military capabilities. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, in a thinly-veiled statement, hinted at his country's role, declaring that Israel had entered a new era of warfare. His words dripping with menace, sent shockwaves through the region, raising fears of a wider conflagration. Adding fuel to the fire, Israeli jets have launched a series of airstrikes targeting suspected Hezbollah positions in southern Lebanon. The message is clear. Israel will not hesitate to use overwhelming force to defend its interests, even if it means plunging Lebanon further into chaos. Hezbollah, for its part, has not taken these attacks lying down. The group's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, has emerged from his bunker to deliver a fiery speech, his voice laced with anger and defiance. He has accused Israel of committing war crimes and vowed a swift and devastating response. They have crossed a red line, Nasrallah thundered, and they will pay a heavy price for their aggression. The spectre of a wider conflict, one that could engulf the entire region in flames, looms large. Hezbollah, with its vast arsenal of rockets and missiles, has the capability to inflict significant damage on Israel. As tensions escalate, the international community has watched with growing alarm. World leaders, acutely aware of the potential for a catastrophic regional war, have been quick to condemn the violence and urge all sides to exercise restraint. The United States, long a staunch ally of Israel, has called for calm and urged a diplomatic solution to the crisis. The European Union, too, has expressed its deep concern, urging both Israel and Hezbollah to step back from the brink. The United Nations has stepped up its humanitarian efforts in Lebanon, providing much-needed aid to the victims of the violence. However, their efforts feel like a mere drop in the ocean in the face of such overwhelming need. Lebanon, once a beacon of hope and modernity in a turbulent region, now stands at a crossroads. The recent violence has shattered the fragile peace, leaving behind a trail of fear, uncertainty and despair. The streets of Beirut, once bustling with life, are now eerily quiet. The silence broken only by the distant sound of explosions and the wail of sirens. The economy, already in freefall, has been pushed further into the abyss. Food and fuel shortages have become commonplace, and essential goods are becoming increasingly unaffordable for the vast majority of the population. Yet amidst the darkness, there are glimmers of hope. Ordinary Lebanese, renowned for their resilience and spirit, have come together to support one another in this time of crisis. The future of Lebanon hangs precariously in the balance. Will the country succumb to the forces of division and violence, or will it find a way to heal its wounds and forge a new path towards peace and prosperity?